Good morning, Connections. It's Tuesday, October 6, 2020. Great to see you again. Glad you are seeking to start your day right. Start your day anchoring yourself in God's Word and making sure that your heart is aligned with God's heart. There are many opportunities ahead of us today, and there's going to be a a good share of, of challenges as well. So very important to do the work, build the discipline so that we are well equipped no matter what comes. So let's get started. It is that time of the week where I remind you that if you have not made a reservation and you would like to attend Sunday service, very important that you do so. As I announced, I believe, to the entire congregation, uh, whether you were video or live, um, things are getting tight in the sanctuary. We had probably our full maximum capacity, if not one or two more, um, because people are desiring to be back at church, which is a wonderful thing. But because we are still in the middle of a pandemic and we cannot let our guard down, we must continue to practice all the safety protocols we put in place back at the end of May. So that means limiting the number in the sanctuary and limiting the numbers on our bus uh, so that uh, we keep each other safe and we keep our neighbors safe when we return from church. So we have a responsibility to each other. We have a responsibility to our community. And that means uh, we have to to do this reservation system. I love being able to pull up, reminded me of, of back uh, before the pandemic, pulling up and anybody and everybody who wanted to go to church could get on the bus. And I'd often make another loop just to ensure that everybody who wanted to attend church on Sunday, whether they had church on mind on Sunday or just happened to be outside, they could uh, had an open invitation to come to church. That's not the case, unfortunately, as we sit now. Now I need you to make a reservation and encourage those that you are trying to encourage to come to church with you to make a reservation as well. Very important that once we reach that 30 number that we are no longer uh, making more reservations beyond that, except that we are making reservations for the following Sunday. So anybody who is last and not able to, to make this Sunday will be at the front of the line for next Sunday service. So that's where we are, and that's where we thought we would be um, much sooner, but we've managed to uh, stay below that, that maximum capacity all through the summer and into the fall. But now we are starting to, to press at the edge of that. So if you are wanting to attend... Uh, I need you to make a reservation. I need you to make a call, um, whether it's the number on the card or the number here on the screen. Both ring through to Dave and you will uh, have a reservation and then we'll organize the transportation accordingly and you will be able to attend. Now, if you are have not made a reservation, you're waiting because you don't know what your work schedule is, those types of things, and you call on, on Thursday morning, and you're told, I'm sorry, we, we, we have 30 people attending. Be prepared for that. Know that you are loved. Know that I want you in attendance, but we are trying to keep you safe and we are trying to keep our neighbors safe. So uh, it's just where we currently are. Now, reminder, as we move into the larger facility, that number of people that we can have, uh, the the sanctuary is much larger in the new facility than, than our current situation. And so our numbers will naturally increase and probably not have to worry about a reservation system um, once we make that transition. So hang tight. Uh, God is at work. Lots of work going on at the building. I'll have an update for that later in the week. But make your reservation today and you'll be there on Sunday. Back to our devotion. As you recall from yesterday, we are finishing up 
the, the last of our study of Paul and his missionary journeys and what happened to Paul after his missionary journeys. And this is the final words that we have from Paul, and it's found in his second letter to Timothy. And yesterday we shared a very intimate, uh, very behind the scenes uh, picture of ministry, the, the personal struggles, the personal sacrifices, the relationships that come and go out of Paul's life, the times when he feels alone, uh, all of those things he is very open and vulnerable about. And that's something I, I truly enjoy about these letters to Timothy and Titus is uh, sometimes it's important for us to see the, the, the man, the, the, the one who doesn't have his act all together. When you're writing to a church and you're trying to correct and you're trying to um, uh, you know, encourage them forward, there's, there's a tone that, that is set. And then when you're writing to a friend and you're writing to someone who knows you um, you know, much better than, than the church in Ephesus, for instance. Um, he kind of lets, lets his guard down and allows us to see um, you know, some of the personal struggles. Now, below all those personal struggles, of course, is a man of faith who trusts in God and even in the toughest times seeks God and finds God. And those are some of the things we discovered as well as we closed out yesterday. Now we did something unorthodox yesterday. We went from chapter one all the way to the end of the letter in chapter four. Now we are kind of reversing course and going back for some of the teaching, some of the things that he wanted to make sure that, uh, that Timothy had in his belt before um, he ended his ministry um, his, and you know, shortly after that, his life ended. So that's where we're gonna pick up today. So back to chapter one in 2 Timothy. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God. Now, if you recall, part of his introduction that he, uh, was made yesterday was that he knows that Timothy is a, has a strong faith. And that faith comes from a strong heritage passed down from his grandmother to his mother and now to Timothy. So that's where we're picking up this thread. If you're a little con confused about for this reason, this reason is because you are a, uh, you have, a, you're a man of great faith. So for this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. So do not be ashamed at the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner. Rather, join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. All right, a little bit to unpack there. Uh, one of the, the coolest imageries is right out of the gate, the fanning into flame. Um, this idea that you know, when you first come into relationship with, with God, you are, uh, you know, lit up as a, you know, as you're starting a fire and it's warm and it's bright and it's burning hot. But then over time, that fire starts to dim. And if we're not careful and we don't continue to add fuel, we don't continue to strive forward that can just become this you know, bed of coals. Now, the interesting thing is that bed of coals can sit there for quite some time. And if we're willing to, to restoke it, we find that we have all the makings to make an even greater fire because the, the bed of coals is so hot, provides a beautiful place to, to continue the fire and to add more fuel, add more. So that's the same thing that God desires to do in us. That uh, many of us were excited about coming into right relationship with God, could not believe that, that we would be invited into the family. And we started our life with God with great passion. And then over time, 
the world just comes in, you know, piece by piece and, and, and steals that passion. The good news for us today is that God gives us the ability to fan that passion back into flame. Take what you, you once had, take, take your, your rudimentary knowledge of who God is and that passion and the remembering of that and fan it into flame. Now, I don't think that Timothy had ever gotten to the point where his flame went out. But I do think over time he's been discouraged and perhaps has said, as many ministries ministers have said, which is, what's the point? As we've discussed in the past, am I making any impact? And that's part of why you know, we see this second letter to Timothy is because Paul knows that, that Timothy is still wrestling with those questions. Unlike the first letter, this letter is written in, you have responsibility, Timothy. You need to do the work to make sure that you uh, fan into flame everything that God has poured into you. And that what God has poured into Timothy is, is his spirit. And you have all the equipment you need to be successful. Power, love, and self-discipline. Now we're going to talk a little bit more about this last bit. So let's kind of just recognize that once again, Paul is inviting um, Timothy into his, the, the suffering for the gospel. And we have a better understanding from our study previously that, that God, having a better understanding of God's heartbreak, being invited into God's heartbreak, gives us a, a, a new understanding of the importance of sharing the gospel and also what a great value, what a, what a tremendous, uh, how precious our salvation is. But certainly as it's written and as we see it here and as we see it here again in a moment, not the best recruiting tool. I don't know where that in just a minute. Continuing in two. You then, my son, be strong in the grace that, that is in Christ Jesus. And the, thing you, and the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses entrust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. Share. Just as Timothy was raised so that, that Paul could pour all of his knowledge, wisdom, uh, experience into to Timothy. Now Timothy's turn to turn and look for the vessels that God is raising up to, to do the same thing. That's how the church continues to move forward. We have to be willing to, to share. We have to be willing to, to recognize that we have a responsibility. We touched on it last week as we talked about the generations and that many, you know, as they move later into life, just kind of sneer at the generation coming up behind and saying, well, it's their turn. Let them work it out. Nobody was there for me, um, which is a lie. But we have a responsibility to seek out and, and know that God is going to raise up. He is faithful. He's, you know, you may have to... to to share your heart with, with hundreds in order to, to gain a handful. But God is faithful, and he has, he's going to touch someone's heart today. And today is going to be their day to, to be, be uh, a fresh fire. And you are the catalyst to that. And then your job will be to sow into that over time. It's where we are as a church. Certainly, I see another... You know, 15, 20, however long God calls me to lead connections. But connections, in order to make it to the next generation, we need to be looking for those who are going to lead connections when our day of ministry is over. So just as Paul is charging Timothy, 
So we have been charged to continue to, to scan the horizon for the next leaders. Very important. Otherwise, churches die out in a single generation or a couple of generations because they become insulated and and stop looking and, and scanning the horizon for the next leaders. Join with me in suffering. Wow. Again. Join with me in suffering like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. Now, there are many inspirational passages that we find in Scripture, things that are appropriate for church signs out on the street. I don't know that we would get much play if we put on the sign, Join with me in suffering like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. The good news is about salvation. The good news is that the victory has already been won. The good news is no matter what we, we have done in our previous life, if we come to God with a contrite heart and ask for forgiveness, we receive forgiveness. I'm grateful that we've had the study and the understanding through Hosea of understanding how heartbroken God is. And to truly be aligned with his heart is to understand that heartbrokenness. And I believe Paul, has a, after years and years and years of ministry, shares God's heartbrokenness for the world. Now we also talked when we shared that message a couple of weeks ago, it's very important that we don't allow our hearts to be hardened when they're broken. That God continues to extend his heart over and over again, and that is what he is calling us to do. And that is what Paul is calling Timothy to do. And he puts it in several different ways in order for Timothy to try to, to understand um, what he is speaking. And the first one is the good soldier. No one serving as a soldier gets entangled in civilian affairs, but rather tries to please his commanding officer. We speak of it often, that you only have one member in your audience, and that is God himself. And if he is smiling upon you, then you have, you're doing well. You are on the right track, no matter what any critics are saying in your life, if God is pleased, that is your commanding officer. That's you are uh, directly on course. We often get pulled off course when we try to to appease or try to to uh, align ourselves or be more attractive to to others. Very important that we stay on track and and follow. The direction and the orders of the commanding officer. And you might have an understanding of that if you've served in the military and you recognize that that, that structure is in place. That's why veterans uh, often have a, a clearer understanding of many of the biblical concepts of self-sacrifice and discipline and self-control and this you know, hierarchy and God is a God of order. And so the military um, has many of that same structure. So there are many of positive attributes that come from uh, being a good soldier. And so that's why Paul is, is using this example. Continuing, if you're not a good soldier, you don't know what a good soldier looks like. How about an athlete? Similarly, anyone who competes as an athlete does not receive the victor's crown except by competing according to the rules. Often the world will say the means justifies, uh, or the ends justify the means. Meaning, no matter how you get there, as long as you accomplish the goal, it doesn't matter. And God says, no, the, the means is what it's all about. Living a life that glorifies him, that lives within the boundaries, is how we run our race well. 
if we're cutting corners, if we are um, adopting the things of the world to uh, share the gospel or share a version of the gospel, um, we count noses, we count um, you know, how much money's in the bank account, we, we can easily get distracted. We have to abide in God's boundaries and share the gospel that was shared through Jesus. And so, yet another example. So we have the good soldier, now we have the athlete the, with integrity that doesn't cheat. And then finally, the hardworking farmer should be the first to receive a share of the crops. Meaning that we are invited in, that when, when we, what we produce, what we um, are, you know, what we are laying up, when you share God's love, mercy, and grace, then those same things are poured out into your life. When we are aligned with God's heart, we and where our faith grows, we grow. The farmer, the one who is spreading the seeds, benefits from his labor, as it should be. So, though we are, are always looking to our neighbors, always looking to those that we can reach, we also recognize by just the work alone that we, are, we ourselves are being fed. We are becoming better versions of ourselves. Continue to press forward. Continue to seek God. And allow your heart to be fanned into flame. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for, for these lessons for the reminder, Lord, that, that if left too long, our fires can dim. And left even longer, it just turns to a bed of ash. But if we witness, Lord, we have seen that underneath that bed of ash are still hot coals that are waiting to be fanned back into flame. Perhaps that's us. Perhaps that's where we find ourselves today, of recognizing through this devotion that we have fallen away, that we used to be much more passionate about our relationship, and now we just take you for granted. Perhaps that's those that you have called us to reach, many if not all of our neighbors have had an opportunity at some point in their life to hear the gospel. But the world has snatched them away and, and taken anything that they might have learned, and now they are just this bed of ash. But through your church and through the work that you are calling us to do, Lord, you are asking us to, to be the fan that fans them into flame, that gives them a, a new life. Help us to see the world as you see it, Lord. Others would consider the fire out and dead and move on. But you see it as hot coals just under the surface that need to be ignited. Help us to have the patience. Help us to, to continue to reach. Lord, we seek you in all things. We continue to, to marvel at the lessons that you share through Paul. We ask, Lord, that you would continue to give us insight so that we may apply the words that were offered 
so many years ago, but still have relevance today. There are so many things unsettling, so many things unknown. We pray for all of those that are struggling in this pandemic, all of those that are facing uncertainty over the latest tropical storms in the Gulf. Bring peace, Lord, for your glory and for your honor. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Go make the most of the Tuesday. I think it should be relatively cool again today. Getting a little bit more humid out there. But uh, uh, enjoy it while we've got it. And I will see you back here tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock. And we will do it all over again. I miss you and love you. Until we see each other again, be good. Be good.